I am Faris Sadka. Today we are at Mr. Ron Star's office. He is counselor of Ward 6. So let's go and ask him why should we re-elect him. Thank you Mr. Ron Star for your precious time. So how are you today? I'm doing good. I'm very happy to be uh, with you today and uh, share some information. Tell us something about yourself and your experience as a counselor. Well, I'm a uh, professional engineer. I'm also a professional land economist. I've been doing business in Mississauga for 35 years. Uh, I'm a family person. I have two daughters and uh, three grandsons. And I've been involved in a, a lot of volunteer work, including uh, being the vice chairman of the Credit Valley Hospital. Uh, I've been the president of the Board of Trade. I've been on many, many committees, uh, symphony and the mayor's uh, golf tournament, her foundation. I just, I believe in giving back to the community. And I think by being a business person in the community, you also meet many, many people and you're able to find out what the needs and desires and what the best way for the city to be run. So that's uh, what my background is. Please share with us your achievements especially from your current tenure? Well, well, for the past four years, I've uh, really tried to make a uh, real effort to increase and to better our community uh, facilities. And we've already finished the Woodlands Library. That's a, a brand new renovation. The River Grove Community Center. We spent $11 million on the renovations there. I'm very proud of that. We also did the GO Station uh, the new parking lot that we have. We had to increase that by 1,100 spaces. We were all part of that. And these are community things that we need. Also, the, uh, uh, the Credit Valley conservation areas, I want to improve that we have more greening and more environmentally sensitive areas. And I've done that specifically so that we have areas that we have for recreation uh, for our young people and especially our seniors because they want to also do the same things. And that's another thing that I've uh, really fought for is that we need more senior programs and uh, I've tried to do that uh, a great deal. And I think we've succeeded. We uh, have uh, a lot more seniors uh, groups now and I try to facilitate and try to work with them. As a matter of fact, I sit on the board of the umbrella group right now. And one of the biggest things I, f I feel very proud uh, of is that for the Pakistani community, we were able to get them uh, almost permanent facilities uh, at Credit Vale Mills at Eglinton and Credit View. Now they have a space that they can call their own, and we're working on it to increase it. So, you know, these are the proud achievements that I have that uh, we can work together with the community no matter what background uh, the people and what country they came from. It's important that we all work together. Were there any challenges you had to face at this position? Well, the biggest challenge that we face right now as a community and as a, as a city, and probably we're facing this right across the, the whole uh, GTA area, is transportation, gridlock, and congestion. You can't get around anymore. You know, 10, 15 years ago, you used to be able to drive quickly places. Now, there is no such thing as one rush hour. Rush hour starts the first thing in the morning and it finishes 6 or 7 o'clock at night. We have to do something about that. I'm committed to make sure that we can do a better job of coordinating all the money from the province, the federal government, and even our own money to make sure that we get the people out of their cars. That's the challenge. People don't like to get out of their cars, but we have to provide a better transportation system that we can have a public transit system that works and that will allow people to get out. And by getting people into public transit, into buses, into subways, into uh, light rail, cars on the road will be less, so therefore it helps everybody. So that's the biggest challenge that we see right now. Second challenge I see is that we have to maintain our taxes at a level that's reasonable. And I pledge, I promise, that taxes will not be uh, above inflation. So people can live with inflation because that's rising a little bit anyway. Yeah. But uh, insofar as uh, four, five, eight percent increases, I'm totally against that, and I really think that we can keep it at inflation. So that's the other challenge. Uh, so, Mr. Ron, what what are your plans for youth? 
Well, I think it's a good question because our youth uh, right now, we have to uh, do a lot of things for them. First of all, we have to provide recreation facilities. We have to provide, uh, I think, activities, uh, whether they're small children all the way up to teenagers and into their 20s. The biggest concern I have is that once a uh, young person gets their education, whether it's high school, college, university, and whatever level they decide to seek, uh, we have to be there for them to provide jobs. And I think young people are having a real difficulty uh, getting the jobs they want in this community. Yeah. In this community. Uh, my goal is to make sure that we have enough opportunities by working with the federal government, the provincial government, and the municipal government to make sure that we have those opportunities for our young people right here. And uh, I think by cooperating, by working together, and, and maybe seeking new ideas. Maybe we all have to work together. Maybe we have a town hall meetings and yeah. that's something I want to get together with the community. Yeah. It's just not me saying we need jobs. We have to hear from people like yourself from the, and even the young people. Tell us what your problems are. So after being reelected, I think uh, the first thing we do uh, in, in the new year is to say, let's see what we can do as a community to make sure that we get better jobs and jobs in this community, not just all over the GTA. And we have heard you, you are a people person. Yes, I, I believe that uh, I, I, I love to talk to people, I love to hear their ideas. And to me, that's so important. Uh, you have to listen. And by listening, I think we, we find out what the areas of concern are, so, and, and uh, then we put some sort of a plan of action together. How do you stay in touch with the community and how you know their needs? That's a uh, even better question because uh, I believe that uh, as a counselor and somebody who represents the people, I have to know what their thoughts are. I love to attend all kinds of events. I don't care if there's only five people or 500 at an event because you always learn something from those people. Uh, by hearing their ideas and attending uh, whether it's a social event or it's a business event or maybe it's a workshop. Uh, by attending these and contributing, I think, uh, from our side as a city and as a counselor, we can learn. And I think by learning, we know what the concerns are. The other thing I like to do is to have uh, a newsletter at least twice a year. I have a newsletter that goes out twice a year and I always ask for comments back. I tell the people in the newsletter what's going on in the municipality and the region because don't forget we're still part of the Peel region. So I let them know what's happening. And what I do also there is I publish all my numbers, my phone numbers, my access numbers, my email, all my numbers are there. I don't hide. If, if you want to get a hold of me at home, my number is there. It's, it, it's, you know, it's on my card. It's, uh, you know, we, we have to stay in touch. I, I'm one of these people that, uh, as you mentioned before, I am a people person. I believe in getting involved, making sure that I communicate with all levels, by the way. I, I, you know, all levels of whether they're children. I, I've had children in here, you know, 8 and 10 years old, asking me questions of what they do. I've had seniors in here. I go to their meetings. And it's a matter, I think, of uh, really staying in touch and uh, trying to be a person who appreciates what's going on outside so that then I can then apply those ideas uh, from the uh, municipal perspective to say, we need a budget for this. And it really works out well, because let me tell you, by being a person like that, I, just today I had a call from a member of the federal uh, government asking, Ron, you're really involved with the community. If we had some extra money, what would you put that money into? And they, he said to me, and you're the only person I'm asking in Mississauga this because you're involved. Yeah. So I was very, very pleased, I was honored that yeah. here a, a member of parliament is asking what ideas are good for the community. And, um, and that's, by the way, that's putting money into something, which is very, very important. important yeah. And I, sometimes it's so tough, especially for newcomer groups and whatever, they, they can't quite figure out what the system is. I'm here to help figure out the system so that we can uh, come up with a, a solution and so that we all work together and make a better community. Yeah. I personally want to know, yes. how do you support women in that's, any program? Do you have any specific program for women? Well, I think uh, in, in this day and age that we live in right now, it's very, very important that, uh, uh, that there is no gender uh, difference. 
I really think that they we're all equal. And let me tell you about my own company that I had. Uh, I worked with my wife, I worked with my daughter, and when I decided to get into politics, guess who took the company over? My daughter. So, you know, there, I know about working with women. I've also, by the way, uh, realized that there's many programs and I guess the idea of people uh, uh, doing programs that are universal. And that means including women. It doesn't mean that it should be all men or all women. I think there is a, there's a crossover here that we have to work together. I, I have to tell you that uh, I sat on the board uh, for the interim place, the women's shelter uh, for abused women. I sat on that as, a, as a, a male. I sat with all these women and it was very enlightening to hear what goes on. But at the same time, I think I was able to provide a different perspective to a women's group and, and I learned from them, they learned from me and I think that's what the programs have to be. I don't think we can just say, well, we have to do something specifically for women. Because in this day, uh, we really should be all working together, especially in this multicultural society that we have. Yeah. And we, se we sense that sometimes, and I'm told that from different areas, that sometimes, you know, women uh, are, are maybe not expected to do this or that. Uh, you know, I expect women to be equal. I mean, in, in terms of weakness? Yes. Physically weakness? Or? No, 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 I mean just uh, that the, it, 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 whether it's even joining the fire department, Sorry. you know, or the police department, they should be involved. I, I mean, there's, there shouldn't be the old idea of many years ago that you're a male and that's the, that's the job for you. Yeah. I think if you want to be a fireman, if you want to be a, uh, something else uh, that you have a, you have a particular uh, skill for, then do it. And I think we should promote that as men, and women should promote that the same thing. So I have no problem uh, working with uh, women. I think the, the best, uh, I guess, uh, work relationship sometimes is I work on some committees uh, for volunteerism and everything. The women do the best job. I want to tell you that right now. So I, I enjoy it. Why we should re-elect you, Mr. Ron? The reason you should elect Ron Starr as the uh, counselor in Ward 6 is the fact that uh, A, I do have the experience, B, I have the both the engineering and financial background, I have the integrity, and best of all, I have the commitment, the commitment to make sure that I serve all the people of uh, Ward 6 and of Mississauga. I think it's very, very important to be able to t take a look at things globally and to make sure that overall I am providing the best service possible, the best value for your tax dollar. You'll get that when you vote for me, and I promise that uh, I'll always, always talk to you. I don't uh, have any closed doors. I want to be able to be an accessible uh, person. I want to be able to talk to you and find out what the problems are. And by being a people person, I really think that that's why the best choice in Ward 6 is Ron Starr. Thank you very much for your support, and uh, I look forward to talking to you uh, over the next four years. Do you have any special message for the voters of Ward 6? Uh, I'm running for re-election because I want to serve you, I want to work for you, and I think I can do that job better than any of the other candidates. I have, like I mentioned before, the experience, the background, the integrity, the commitment. And again, the commitment is the biggest thing. I'm a 24-7, seven, seven days a week person that I don't mind spending a lot of time working with uh, people, the residents, and all of their concerns. So simply, I intend to be the best counselor possible for all of you. I um, intend to be here for you. And uh, please vote for Ron Starr on the 27th, that's Monday. And I will certainly support you uh, after that for the next four years. And I really want to thank you for listening to the comments. And don't forget, please vote Ron Starr October 27th. I need your support. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. We have seen Mr. Ron Starr is a people person. And he is available for you all the time. And that is a fair reason to elect him. I hope you will be excited. So on 27th October 2014, come out of your houses and vote for the right person and make the right choice. Thank you.